You really don't like that? This podcast is over. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed it. That was it. a different thing. <laughs> I hate it. I hate all of it. You really don't like ASMRs? Yo, the soap ones, I could listen to it forever. Where they do what? They, they have, like, just soap, and they, like, cut it. But it's, like, already, like, kind of cut, so it's just, like, a crunchy sound. Or, like, when they run stuff over. Okay, well... Not the same, I guess. I guess I don't like ASMR. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's there's like the, like the, the chick who ones. does horse ASMR. Like it's horse. also like there's also a visual. So she like cleans out the hooves of the horses. The sound of the hitting oh, the weird. like cleaning their shoes. Yeah, Is that what they're called shoes. Yeah. She's cleaning shoes. the shoes of the horse, and it's literally her cleaning it and like the sound of it. I don't know. It's really no, I like that's that. interesting. You're welcome. <laughs> I like the crunchy. I like the crunchy sound. <laughs> anyway, this is Reba. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I decided. I didn't know we were changing our name. I decided to change my name to Reba for this episode. I, you didn't warn me. I would have. I just want to be Reba name. now. I'm Nathaniel. <laughs> Hi, this is Reba, and this is Nathaniel. You know what's funny? I listened to our first episode. The other day, what, what movie did we even watch? Oh, Cinderella, and like us introducing ourselves <laughs> sounded so unnatural. <laughs> was, oh, I'm sure that whole episode sounds. I was natural. uncomfortable. No, honestly, Cinderella is a good episode. You know what? <laughs> Literally, no. Oh, no. Alice in Wonderland. That episode. I was a train wreck, and you were, like, we were both having our own train wreck. <laughs> like, Separate train wrecks. I was like, oh, my God. Bless everyone who listens to this. Yeah, sorry, something guys. something is wrong with you. Oh, no. I tried to do some research into if Doc Antle had anything to do <laughs> with, with George of the Jungle. I couldn't find anything, so I'm going to say no. Weird. But could you, like, see, like, other movies that he's done? Yeah, but there were only, like, there's only, like, seven on his IMBD. That can't be correct. Yeah, because he, like, lists a bunch in Tiger King. So maybe he gets paid for his services, but not, he doesn't get any like film it. revenues or any. He's not getting, like, residuals from those movies or anything. I think it's like a, hey, can you bring a tiger here? We'll pay you $500 kind of deal. Probably. I mean, that's what I figured it was. But I figured he would still have, like, a list of the movies he's watched. I thought in the cast it would be, like, Bubbles, the elephant, as... I mean, it probably does, but then What's it's not going to say name? Doc Shep. Shep. <laughs> That's not going to be, like, from Doc and I know, but I assumed Shep would get a check in the mail. <laughs> I just want to know if Shep is taken oh. care of. <laughs> Shep was a large animal used in a movie, so I'm going to go with no. Elephants live for, like, 400 years. Out just in the wild... Up. Not in frickin' He's not captivity. Shamu. He's like, he's living on a... On a what? How <laughs> big do you think... Farm. Do you, how big do you think his his area is? I don't know, but I'm sure he's gonna live a full life. I sincerely doubt it. It's not like he's a four probably, million ton animal kept in a fucking aquarium. Shep like, is probably the one that Doc Antle rode into Tiger King on. <laughs> that was Shep. Oh my god! I, and I Shep am, is dead. And that his name's Bubbles, right? Why do I remember that? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Why do you remember that? That's literally all I wanted to talk about. I love that. Perfect. I have. What nothing. did you bring to the table? <laughs> nothing this time. Oh I, wow! Yes. Brought nothing to the table. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were like doing research into it. I would have looked it up too and done uh, more research. We do, and found it. <laughs> we do separate book reports on <laughs> Doc Antle, fucking animal abuse in the movie industry. <laughs> I mean. And if you want to bring that up, I will go in. But the, the gorillas were fake. Yeah, Apes, those were... gorillas, I couldn't tell you the difference. And I work at King Kong at fucking aren't Universal. Apes, aren't gorillas apes? Aren't apes, like, the type of primate they are? I think you could be right. <laughs> right, because monkey, there's gorilla, monkeys, but gorilla, then there's, like, types of monkeys. A gorilla is an ape. We're and scientists. Then all <laughs> Hi, it's me, Dr. Melissa. <laughs>
Wait, right? Oh, wait. Dr. Reba. <laughs> this yeah, is Dr. Dr. Reba. <laughs> I love Nathaniel on you. Change Thank your you. name. You're okay. <laughs> Changing my name to Nathaniel. I'm going to go change my Instagram name I right actually now. would love to be Reba. Oh, my God. The largest of the great apes, gorillas, are <laughs> stocky animals. So I was right. So this time. We're here to tell you why. Peter Pan. It's tragical. I just realized while watching this that he plays a pan flute. Is yeah. that why his name is Peter Pan? Yeah, I think so. Welcome to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was like, the whole thing was like he was an orphan and he got taken to Neverland. He like pulled it out and I was like, oh, a pan flute. And then I like had like a brain, like <laughs> a epiphany. Jimmy Neutron like, you brain know blast. I was like. <laughs> you know that gif of the guy where he's like shaking his head and he's got like long blonde that hair. That was literally me on the couch. I don't know if you could feel it, but I was literally like, <laughs> oh my God, Peter Pan. I hope you all know what I'm talking about. No, yeah, the whole thing was, was like he was from London and he got like taken like to Neverland and him and the Lost Boys. So this movie starts. With force credits. You have to look at the credits. You also, have to watch them. We were talking about how... Back in the day when they did force credits, the credits were so pretty. Like, yeah, somebody sat there and drew every single page. They're literally hand drawn. Yeah. And now it's just a black screen with like 10,000 For the most part, names. yeah. The art for the credits, which are at the beginning of the movie, because only, oh, actually, I don't know. This one was pretty long. Yeah, it was pretty I long. I would say like maybe, maybe even like 50 people. <laughs> made this movie. A solid 55. A solid 50 people. But yeah, it's so pretty. It is really pretty. It was all the lands and Neverland. I didn't know Neverland was two words. I think one word is the Michael Jackson area. <laughs> and then two words is actual Neverland. Oh, okay. oh I was thinking Michael Jackson. Okay. <laughs> My bad, my bad. Yeah. I'm back on track now. Perfect. They are, they zoom in on London. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do you say it like Don't that? Know. It's not even an accent. You just like <laughs> shout it. It's not even like you're like London, like trying to do an accent. Like, London. I must have heard somebody say that so- at some point in my life like that. In and my it just stuck. And it stuck in my brain like that. It's very unfortunate. If anyone knows where I got that from, let me know. So no, anyway. please let her just suffer with it. <laughs> we don't need to know. <laughs> I say like that every time. You do, because what else did we watch that had London in it, and you said it like that? I asked if Alice in Wonder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's from London. It's just, it's stuck in my brain like that. Like, when I read the word London, that's how it comes out in my brain. Are you intelligent? I thought you were smart. I am. Are you? Um, they ugh. talk about this story has has happened before and it will happen again. Yeah. No. No yelling. Yeah, what does that mean? Like, I mean, we talk about it at the end of the movie because the dad remembers Peter Pan. So I think it means two different things. I think that is in reference to the fact that this is not... An original story. Like, Peter Pan has been told. It's uh-huh. a book. There's other, like, like renditions of it. There's no, other movies about it. it. But I also think it's in reference to the fact that, like, Peter comes to, like, what they, quote, unquote, the mainland, whatever, London. And, I mean, he I got the he Lost Boys. he kidnaps children a bunch. Yeah. I was, go- I was literally just going to say he got the Lost Boys from somewhere. Yo, Peter Pan snatches children all the time. Maybe. That's what I got out of it. Okay. That's fair. But if you want to be all philosophical, I mean, I don't don't I always get philosophical with it. I mean, so Peter Pan is um, a child snatcher. Yeah, I think we already knew that. So, but who snatched Peter Pan? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> but I wish I fucking knew who did snatch Peter oh, Pan. God. Okay. Do you um, think Peter Pan's actually like a forty-five-year-old man with some sort of? Weird. Like Benjamin Button syndrome. <laughs> but he also has pointy ears and no one else does. That's true. So, so he's he like a like wizard or something. Isn't from Earth? London. <laughs> London. Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to anyway, move on. <laughs> so it uh, zooms in on the Darling household, which great last name. Mm-hmm. And um, Mrs. Darling and Mr. Darling are getting ready for a party. He can't find his cufflinks. Uh, so Mr. Darling needs... Freaking anger management. Yeah, he's yelling a lot. It's really annoying. It, but he Ms. doesn't. Miss Darling is just no fucks given. Yeah, our parents, but opposite. <laughs> yeah, like our mom is Mister Darling and our dad is Mrs. Darling. A hundred and ten percent. 
So in the nursery, Wendy and John and Michael are playing pirate. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendy, I'm just going to say it now, she's way too old to be in that nursery. How old do you think they are? I think she's like nine, right? Like eight or nine? Yeah, so way too old to be well, in that nursery. Well, I think nursery. the reason she's still in the nursery is because she takes care of the boys. I also think John is too old to well, be in no, the nursery. I mean, like what? Michael's three or four. More like, he can't be four. I'd say like three. I'd say three. And he's so baby dogs. John, he's probably like seven. seven. So yeah, Wendy's like nine or ten, bro. She way too old to be in there with them boys. But my thing is, is I think I think nurseries were different back then. Like I think the nursery was like, and the oldest child sometimes stayed in the nursery because they watched the younger children, especially if it was a female. So anyway, the dog is the babysitter, so that's legit. Nana, their dog, is literally bringing them their medicine and cleaning up after them, so I don't know. I think every family needs a dog like that. Also, what is this tonic that they have to take every night. They're drugging their children. It's probably just early adaption of Flintstones mm-hmm. vitamins. <laughs> Maybe. But it also probably has acid in it or some shit or opium because yeah. the times. Anyway, the dog has a bonnet on and is taking care of the children. So there's just really a lot wrong already. Anna is so cute though. <laughs> That's a crusty, dusty little dog. Oh, okay, well. What kind of dog is that? Um, Isn't it like the drooly one? Like, like the St. One Bernard? Where the, yeah. yeah. So Mr. Darling needs to look where he's going because he comes into the nursery and just, he's knocking over the blocks and he's like almost running over his children and whatnot. And like, the dog, like, bro, hello? look where you're going. And he's so mean to little Mikey and he's so cute. I know. Michael's like trying to tell his dad the story about how they're like looking for treasure and like he's so cute. And he literally tells Michael to shut up essentially. He's like, shut the fuck up and leave me alone. How do you look at that? that child and tell it to shut up. Michael is the freaking cutest. He's honestly so cute. He's I can't stand chicken it. chicken nugget. He really is. And then Mrs. Darling comes in and she looks freaking fantastic for three kids. Honestly, <laughs> I wish my waist looked like that. I don't even have a kid. She's like, got that nine inch waist mm-hmm. happening. And Mr. Darling is just freaking out for no reason. He still can't find his cufflinks. His um, bib thing, I don't know what that's called. I'm not even going to pretend I know I what don't it's remember, called. Yeah. It goes over, like, over his, or in his waistcoat, kind of. I don't even know if it's called a waistcoat. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of pretending like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it's got freaking chalk all over it. So he's just, he's literally just shouting and being so rude. And Wendy is just so patient and her dad is yelling at her and she's just like, oh, what's up, dad? There's no way they're not used to it. That's what I'm saying. That's like, yeah, that's literally like our mom. Our family. <laughs> Like, mom is yelling, and we're all just like, um, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. And then dad is yelling about them playing make-believe. Like, what? Like, they're literal children. What are you talking about? Right. I don't understand that part. And he calls them Captain Crook and Peter <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> so those are their new names from are here Are you on Captain out. Crook or are you Peter Pirate? You're Captain Crook. I'm, I'm Peter Reba. Pirate. <laughs> Reba Crapton. Crapton. I'm Crapton Reba. You're Peter Nathaniel. Go, I'm leaving. We're done with this podcast. This is the last episode. We're done. Our aliases. Um, He's had enough. Crapton. Peter Pirate. So he kicks Wendy out of the nursery. Yeah, what the fuck? We're filling the boys' heads with poppycock. Sorry for telling your children bedtime stories since you clearly can't be bothered to parent them and your nine-year-old daughter has to. So now you're going to also kick her out. Who's going to parent them now if it's not Wendy? Nana's Nana's (laughs) chilling, bro. Jesus. like Um, I'm bringing back poppycock. I mean, go for it. Mr. Darling falls over Nana because, again, he literally cannot watch where he's going. So he he trips over the dog, which, by the way, is half his size. I don't (laughs) know how he missed her. (laughs) And he falls, and then everyone is like... Poor Nana. <laughs> like, they don't give a fuck about it. You know, okay, listen, you know 
not to pull from our own personal lives or anything. You know, if that man stubs his toe, even just the littlest bit, he screams about it for 30 minutes. So they don't give a fuck about him because no. they're so used to him complaining about <laughs> they're, shit. They're, for they're actually worried about the dog because <laughs> the dog doesn't get he hurt. Just basically kicked it. Mr. Darling says no more dogs for nursemaids. Yeah, no shit, bro. Like that shouldn't have been a that thing to begin with. Have been the way it was. Um, so he puts her outside. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Darling puts Nana outside, and Nana literally he can't even find the rope to tie her up, and she she brings him her own rope. I really want to beat Mr. Darling up. No, he's not that bad. No, he is that bad. I want to beat his ass. He's like a dick, but like he's also like a family joke. So really, he's cool with me. <laughs> I still want to beat him up. So Mrs. Darling kisses the childrens goodnight, and Wendy asks her to leave the window open because Peter is gonna be back. Yeah, she because has something of his. She stole that fucker's shadow. And Mom is like, "What the fuck?" Okay. Great. She's like, all right, maybe my daughter needs some therapy. She's like, my daughter's ill. <laughs> she needs some more of that tonic. <laughs> so Tink and Peter Pan enter the nursery through the window after mom and dad leave. The little, the little pan flute music <laughs> plays. Uh, and we're going to, this is real Tinkerbell too, not, oh, yes. not fake. This Tinkerbell. is my Tinkerbell. <laughs> we stand this Tinkerbell and this A Tinkerbell queen. only. And Tink is like playing with a music box and... <laughs> <laughs> yells at Tinkerbell <laughs> and she gets annoyed so she starts to fly away because she's like whatever I'm done helping you look for your shadow then he's kind of really mean to her throughout this whole movie oh uh, yeah Peter Pan's a, a whole dick yeah but she finds a mirror and she's like just checking herself out and then she sees her like her hips her butt and her hips um that's not looking great I wish so, I was shaped oh like God. Tinkerbell I kind of am so I got big old hips tiny ass waist and big old hips I do also have a tiny waist with some cake but that's because I use waist <laughs> I don't have any of that use my code no I'm kidding I look like a, <laughs> bought it like on a, Amazon <laughs> I look like a board like I'm literally get a, a waist trainer it's really uncomfortable. You'll love it. <laughs> I don't think that would help me much because I don't have anything below it. Like, that's not like it's going to make it, it look like anything. It moves it. Girl, do you think I had a waist before I had a waist no, trainer? No, I'm talking about my hips. <laughs> I don't have hips. It moves your whole fucking organs around, bro. But I feel like it's just not going to make a difference because I don't have it, hips it to go out. If you wear a waist trainer, it will. That's it's training your waist. That's literally the name of the product. No, I get that. Uh-huh. Like, my waist is going to look smaller, but it's not... I My hips aren't... Oh, no, but you want to have big old voluptuous hips. Yeah, I don't have that, is what I'm saying. Yes, but if your waist is smaller, your hips will look bigger. That's the whole point. No, I get that, but what I'm saying <laughs> what is... What are we talking about? <laughs> So, Tink finally <laughs> finds his shadow. It's in, like, a drawer, and she opens the drawer. Is and... it, like, a drawer, or is it a drawer? No. I'm well, I don't know. Is it a drawer? Yes. Like, I mean, okay, yeah. <laughs> Tink finds his shadow in a drawer, and she opens it, and then he Rassles grabs his it. shadow, <laughs> and the drawer slams shut with Tinkerbell still in it. So, she's just stuck in this freaking dresser drawer it's like a junk drawer too like there's just yeah. a bunch of random shit in there so uh obviously peter pan wrestling his freaking shadow uh wakes wendy up and she just immediately starts yapping away i wasn't even listening because it was really annoying she's literally me <laughs> she's rambling on she never shuts up tink is in the drawer and she hears wendy and she gets really jealous mm-hmm, and she sure. starts getting all red and Scary. I love her. And Peter Pan uh, proclaims that... Girls talk too much. I I concur. Yeah, that's accurate. I'm sure a nine-year-old girl definitely talks too much. I and concur. she's literally just sewing his shadow into his shoe. And my concern here is, first of all, I guess I didn't know how to sew when I was nine. So, I mean, I guess these were different times. They knew how to do yeah, shit. Yeah, they had, like, like, if you were poor, you were working in a factory at yeah, four. Yeah, So, true. yeah, I think... <laughs> But also, she's sewing it into his shoe. Like, it it would hit his foot. She would be sewing it into his foot. His foot would have his shoe Maybe sewn to it. Tough souls. She tells Peter Pan, Wendy tells Peter Pan, that she's so happy that they met because she has to grow up tomorrow. She's got to be a whole ass adult tomorrow. Because she gets her own bedroom. Because she's going to still be nine. Also, I never, ever, ever wanted to share a bedroom with you. No. We never did share a bedroom. No. <laughs> Especially being a girl with, like, two younger boys. Like, Weird. where does she get 
dress. Yeah, I don't know. I hate it. Like, she can't be naked in her own... I guess at nine, you don't really care that much, but, like... I mean... I don't know. I feel like that's when you start getting a little freaky, right? Like 10 or like Yeah. That. That's when I started getting a little I, yeah. freaky. I feel like that's when you start to like discover shit your about vagina yourself. And your titties. Yeah. Yeah, that's no. Very weird. Things are happening at that age. She yeah. should have her own room. Go off, sis. Have your own room. And then Peter is like, oh my gosh, well, let's go to Neverland because then you like don't have to grow up there. And she gets so psyched. She's like, oh my God, Peter, I'm going to kiss you on the mouth, which is exactly <laughs> why she which, should not be sharing she a room. should not be sharing a room with her little brothers. Girlfriend like, she is ready to make out with a man she's never met before. <laughs> she needs, she needs Wendy to. She needs not Wendy time. Not <laughs> Wendy time. As Wendy is walking towards Peter to <laughs> land a smooch Swampy right on the wet one. <laughs> Tinker Bell snatches her wig, bro. Bro, she literally <laughs> she pulls her hair her so hard. And it wakes up John and little Mikey. Peter Pan's like, all right, let's fly out of here, folks. And they're like, we don't fly. So then you can fly slapper of the century honestly i on. love that song me too i know every word and i hate we it genuinely know every word <laughs> but basically yeah you just need to think of a wonderful thought and have faith and trust and pixie dust and some of tinkerbell's butt glitter <laughs> he literally grabs tink by her fucking wings and like shakes her he aggressively does not, he does not care about tinkerbell no so I mean, if you think about it, though, like, I think the point is, is that he's, like, a, a selfish little boy. Like, he literally doesn't care about anyone but himself. The only reason he wants to bring Wendy to Neverland is so she can keep telling stories about him. Yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants to keep hearing stories. He's, like, growing up, then I can't listen to you talk about You're me. Right. That's Hello? true. So he's just a very selfish little yeah. asshole. And then uh, they start to fly out of the Darling residence. <laughs> and the best part of this movie... <laughs> Michael tries to get <laughs> Nana to come with them, and he puts a little bit of pixie dust on. A little on. bit. He oh, aggressively yeah, he murders sh- Tinkerbell <laughs> over Nana. Nana starts to float up, but Nana's on the chain still, so she doesn't get to come. But no. Michael lets out the best line. <laughs> come on, Nana! Nana. <laughs> it's a little, like... Why does he say it like that? Because he's a baby. It's literally like T-H-N-A-N-A. Come on, Snana. (laughs) Let's get shirts that say, come on, Snana. Okay, I'll wear it. You think I will? Why does he say it like that? Because he's a baby. It haunts me. And then they do the whole fly around the town, and there's the river, and there's the building with the clock. Is it the (laughs) Thames? I always thought it was Tams, though. I'm probably definitely wrong. Thames. But we both knew what it was. So Peter and Wendy and Tink and John and Michael Mm -hmm. and Bear. I was like, and who who else? (laughs) Nana didn't make it. So Nana is still back at the fucking house with her ass floating in the air. (laughs) Nana's like fucking choking. (laughs) It's literally her ass (laughs) floating up in the air. Choking oh, on her fucking leash. Poor fucking dog has been through so much tonight. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Darling come home and Fanana's just like, oh, they fucking floated away. So, <laughs> thanks for kicking me out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, so, they head to the second star to the right and straight on till morning and they arrive Neverland. in Neverland, which I spelled like Michael Jackson because I didn't know <laughs> till right now. We literally had subtitles on this whole fucking movie. I don't. I would. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was doing a lot of typing. We descend upon Neverland, two words, and Captain Hook's ship, which is the Jolly Roger, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I love that um, Captain Hook's entire crew despises him. I think they're just bored out here. I think they hate that a grown man does nothing but fight a nine-year-old boy. Is there anything else to do out yeah, there? Yeah, I, I don't know. There's no way that Neverland is the only island in that whole entire place. You could I think it's, yeah, go somewhere it's else. Because it's literally, like, in a fucking star. They say they're going to go somewhere else. Where are they going to go? Where's Where's the else? Bro, that's what I'm saying. I don't... I mean, Neverland's definitely not real. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Mr. Smee is just radiating positivity on this beautiful day. I need All the my other... life. I know. He's so positive. Yeah. All the other pirates are rude as crap. Captain Hook is smoking two cigars at 9 a.m. on the deck of his ship, plotting a revenge of 
Peter Pan. Can we talk about how Smee is a crop top king? He is a crop top king. Like, I love him. He's positive. He's happy. He's a crop top king. We love a he belly moment. <laughs> is so supportive of everything everyone does, even if it's absolute utter garbage. What a good dude. He's just, yeah, he's the best. He he's is. a good sidekick. I do like Smee. Uh, so Captain Hook, obviously pretty mad because Peter Pan cut off his hand and fed it to TikTok. TikTok Croc. And Smee is like, oh, he's just playing games. And he I, literally I says. Was like, okay, I don't know about all that, though. It was a childish prank. His whole hand is gone. I'm sorry. Um, what do you mean? That's not a whippy cushion as a childish <laughs> prank. Chopping off someone's hand and feeding it to a crocodile is far from a childish prank. It's a childish prank, Melissa. It's not. So Captain Hook is planning his revenge on Peter Pan, and he plans to kidnap Tiger Lily Mm -hmm. to get information on Peter Pan's hideout. Because after, I don't know, because no one ages here, so I don't know what the timeline is on, like, how long ago his hand was cut off. Um, But I'm assuming it's been a hot... (laughs) I'm assuming it's been, been like, a hot minute. So this whole time he doesn't know, on this tiny-ass island, where... Peter's hideout is. Yeah. And so Tiger Lily is the chief of the native people's daughter. Correct. And so they're they're close with Peter and the Lost Boys. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to kidnap her and torture her, essentially, to get information from her. That seems fun. I mean, I, what, again, what grown man doesn't want to torture a small child for revenge on a nine-year-old? Yeah. I just, that, that's... A lot for me to process. So while they're talking about this plan, Captain Hook shoots a man off the uh, the old bird's nest. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah. Crow's nest. Shit. I was so close. Oh, I just agreed with you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, a that's crow it. crow is definitely a bird, though. Okay, so Captain Hook shoots a man off the crow's nest mm-hmm. just for singing a little song. He was singing um, a little ditty. So he's got a bit of a temper there. Yeah. That brings a TikTok over. TikTok crack. Not the application. Yeah, no, I accidentally the spelled it like the app quite a few times Spell in my Spell it notes. how you want. So TikTok the crocodile comes over and... That song just reminds me of the water pageant. That's a slapper. Magic Kingdom. Oh my the God. Seven Seas Lagoon. Just that little, that little ditty, bro. Yeah, it's pretty so good. good. Whoever wrote that, kudos to you. That shit is a bop. No, I'm for real. It's so good. It's like 10 <laughs> seconds and you immediately recognize what it is. So but What's that called? A motif? Sure. A lay motif? Yeah. A recurrent theme throughout a musical or literary composition associated with a particular person, idea, or situation. Look at you. I know everything. It's not like you didn't go to school kind of learning about that. Um, Wait, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, we're still on the boat. Mm -hmm. TikTok is freaking Captain Hook the fuck out. Yeah, he really loses his shit. Uh, Captain Hook, most glorious hair award right (laughs) next to, what's her face from Rapunzel? Mm -hmm. Mother God. You. Okay, I was going to wait for you to get there. <laughs> I wasn't going to give it to you. Great hair. Yeah. Great hair. And uh, Peter Pan is spotted three points off the starboard bow. <laughs> Precisely. And they uh, shoot cannons at Peter Pan and Wendy and John and Michael as they're standing in the clouds. Yeah, literally, what the fuck? Literally trying to kill a nine-year-old. No, I just literally can't. is trying to kill him. I just like, don't get over that. Peter is telling Tink to take Wendy and the boys to their hideout and to the Lost Boys. And Tink is like, fuck this bitch. And literally is flying as fast as she physically can to the hideout. Yeah. Beats them there while Wendy's literally flailing in the air trying Mm -hmm. to catch up, screaming at Tinkerbell that she's going too fast because obviously she doesn't know where she's going. She doesn't know how to fly either. She learned how to fly eight minutes ago. That's accurate. And Tink gets to the hideout first and tells the Lost Boys that Peter has a mission for them and that they need to shoot down the Wendy bird. So they do. They try to shoot Wendy from the sky. Quite aggressive. <laughs> There's like a little bear one. It's cubs. And the two raccoons? They're just named the twins. They don't have a name. Fox? That's slightly. He's my favorite. A skunk? That's Toodles. And there's a The bunny more. rabbit. Oh, there's a rabbit? Mm-hmm. He's oh, a bunny. That's Nibs. Guess. I love them all so Sweet much. Sweet Nibs. <laughs> they're my favorites. <laughs> 
Um, I literally am obsessed with the Lost Boys. Like, they've always loved them. I think they're so cute. None of them are cute. I love them. I'm sorry. Slightly is my favorite with his little buck teeth. I love him. Maybe the skunk. That one's kind of cute. Toodles is cute. Yeah, so... Uh-huh. Exactly, Bubba. So they literally he, shoot Wendy out mm-hmm. of the sky. And Peter Pan comes back, and he's really mad at the Lost Boys, and he's like, why would you shoot Wendy out of the sky? I, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they're like, Tinkerbell told us that's what you wanted us to do. So Peter Pan charges Tink with high treason and says that she is banished for a week. Well, first he says forever, and then Wendy's like, bruh, you met me nine minutes ago, um, she's been in your life for way longer, so how about you don't banish her forever? And so well, he changes it to a week. He's 11, so. Right. He I fucking like sucks at making rules. Keeps going up in age. <laughs> I don't know how old he's supposed to be. I would say 11 or 12. I don't know. Wendy wants to go meet the mermaids, and Fair. John wants to go meet the engines. And this is where the new Disney Plus 12 second warning about racial insensitivity before the movie comes, comes into, into play. play. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. At one point he calls them the aboriginals, which I don't think is really Accurate PC either. either. I think native is. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's racially insensitive to call them Indians, Indians, red men. There's all more, of it. But yeah. And I am proud of Disney for putting a disclaimer in front of their movies on. We should read it. Don't you have it in your phone? Yeah, I have a screenshot of it. Oh. Read it. So Disney Plus is adding this to the beginning of some of their movies. I'm not sure if it's the same. Um, I think it is the same. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to add it to more movies. I think it's only on like three or four as of right now, but I'm sure they're going to go through their catalog. So this is what Disney Plus has in front of Peter Pan. You cannot skip it. It is 12 seconds long and you have you cannot skip over it. This program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. Disney is committed to creating stories with inspirational and aspirational themes that reflect the rich diversity of the human experience around the globe. To learn more about how stories have impacted society, visit www.disney.com slash stories matter. It's pretty cool. How do you, actually, Disney? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. So John and Michael and the Lost Boys are going to see the natives, and Wendy and Peter are going to Mermaid Lagoon. Mm-hmm. Just another raging slapper from the 1950s following the leader. <laughs> It's a bop. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yes. Um, and in this in this very short song, uh, Michael almost dies about 900 times. Yeah, he really needs help. Also, as we talked about earlier, obviously, Neverland is not that big. It is an island. You can, like, they're clearly walking across it in not a very long span of time. They cross, like, nine different terrains. There's, like, yeah. a safari area. Like, <laughs> there's, like, like, a rhino. They cross, like, forest. They cross, like, a rainforest. I'm like, it's made of. I know. It's in their heads. It's in their imagination. It just is so. Get over <laughs> it. I'm too adult to get over it. John and the Lost Boys are trying to come up with a plan to kidnap the natives, but uh, the natives are already there and kidnap them <laughs> instead. Yeah. yeah, they surround so them. While they're trying to make their plan, they surround them and kidnap them. And the chief ties them up at the encampment, as mm-hmm. they call it, mm-hmm. and says that they he is not setting them free this time. Normally they, they set each other free. So Peter and the boys will catch them and set them free, and then sometimes the natives will catch the boys and set them free. And mm-hmm. he's like, well, this time I'm not setting you free because... Tiger Lily, my daughter, is missing. And he's big mad about it. And he thinks that it's the Lost Boys. And the Lost Boys like, we don't know anything about Tiger Lily, bro. What you talking about? We wouldn't steal your girl. It's obviously Captain Hook. I right. mean, if it's anybody on this small island, we know it's Captain Hook. So then we go to my personal favorite, the Homicidal Mermaids. They're all obsessed with Peter, which is fair, because clearly Peter's obsessed with Peter. Well, who so. else are they going to be obsessed with? Fucking Smee, bro? Like, there's nobody there. Yes, Smee is the correct choice. <laughs> But so they're all obsessed with Peter. So he's like, I want to tell you guys a story about me. And then Wendy's like struggle bussing to like keep up with him. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh my God, hey mermaids. So they all decide to try and drown her because 
um, there's another girl trying to take Peter Pan's attention, and she's human. So they literally try to drown her. And Peter laughs at her. He laughs at Wendy getting drowned. Like I said, he's a selfish child. Like, yeah. he, do, he does not care about anyone other than himself, and whatever he finds humorous is humorous. Like, yeah. watching then, a girl drown? Hilarious. But then Wendy tries to beat one over the head with a... A giant conch a shell. Conch She's going to so. knock that bitch out. Yeah. I mean... That's fair. But then, uh, you know, Wendy's like, oh, my gosh, Peter, like, pay attention to me. And he's like, okay, Wendy, illy. And then <laughs> this is verbatim. His attention span goes back. <laughs> right. And then Hook rolls on by in a small little rowboat. I put a dinghy. I feel like a dinghy is like, no, I feel like a dinghy is a rubber. It's, it's a, a rowboat. rowboat. You didn't call it a rowboat the first Yes, time. I did. Oh. It's literally in my notes. Rowboat. Oh. Anyway, then Hook rolls by in a rowboat with Tiger Lily and Smee, and they're headed to Skull Rock, mm-hmm. Peter says, mm-hmm. which is a cave shaped like a skull. Pretty badass. It's pretty badass. Yeah. yeah. And so Hook is going to, he has Tiger Lily tied up with an anchor tied to her, which I'm sure is quite heavy. Um, and he's got her sitting on this tiny little rock in the middle of the water, and he's going to wait for the tide to come in, and she's going to drown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's going to drown if she doesn't tell Hook where Pan's hideout is. Mm-hmm. And Tiger Lily ain't saying shit. She is a loyal friend. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not drowning for no one. I'm snitching on all of you. Well, she's <laughs> fake. She's in Wendy's imagination. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Listen. <laughs> um, so... In order to distract them, Peter pretends to be a spirit. An island spirit. Yeah, yeah, of the cave and scares the shit out of them. So Hook goes to... I think Hook catches on pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quickly. But I mean, Smee obviously Because he's like, I'm going to go look for this spirit. Right, this whatever it is. He knows it's Peter. Right. So he goes out towards like the mouth of the cave while Peter then starts pretending to talk like Hook, which he's very good at mocking people. Mm -hmm. Um, Good for him. I guess it's a skill you gather when you do nothing else with your time. Uh, So he mocks uh, Hook's voice and tells Smee to release Tiger Lily. And take her back to her people. Yeah. And then Hook comes in and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, he catches Smee trying to take her back. And then he's like, no, idiot, take her back into the cave. And then he hears Peter Pan mocking him and sneaks up behind him and tries to kill him. So then they start sword fighting. Yep. Except... Hook has a sword and a hook, and Pan has a tiny little dagger. Yeah. That's fair. He's I killing mean, it, though. I think that's a, a fair fight there. Yeah. Um, so then they're fighting, and they're up on, like, a high cliff, and Peter's, like, walking backwards. And he obviously can fly because, you know, he's Peter right. Pan. So he walks off the rock like he's still walking, and Hook keeps walking towards him. And he walks off, and he almost falls. He does. And he grabs onto the rock face with his hook, and mm-hmm. who comes up? Tick-tock crack. Tick-tock crack. That grown man um, with a hook hand starts sobbing like a child mm-hmm. because he's terrified of this crocodile. He is baby. Yep. What a pathetic man. <laughs> and then he does actually fall into the mouth of Tick-tock. Um, yeah, but he gets out. duke it out for a bit. Yeah. So Tiger Lily, now saved, gets taken back to the camp. And he only... Victory! She, she only gets saved because... Uh, Wendy reminds Peter that she's fucking drowning. Like, literally, Peter Pan does not, re- again, selfish, does not remember anything It's fine about Tiger Lily. He's just like, yeah, I won. Yeah. Back on the Jolly Roger, mm-hmm. Hook decides that he is going to find Tinkerbell, yeah. right? Is this when this happens? Yeah, he. well, he's being all dramatic, acting like he's on his deathbed after swimming away from TikTok Croc. Right. And so Smee tells Hook... That he heard a rumor from this person who heard from this person who heard from this person that uh, Pan banished Tink. And so Hook finally wakes the fuck up and he's like, bro, this is our this is our shot. Like, this is it. We're going to kidnap Tinkerbell and get some information out of her. Which is honestly the smartest thing Hook has done this whole fucking movie, yeah. to be fair. So he puts on his fancy hook, which is just a gold hook instead <laughs> of a silver one. giant fucking jewel on yeah, it. Yeah, he puts a big old ring on it, too. He also has it's a cute. corkscrew in there. Yeah, it looked like a corkscrew. It's ready for some wine, my dude. It's a special hook. <laughs> so Peter Pan returns Tiger Lily to the chief, and the chief makes him a chief. In sign too. language. You yeah. can't forget that part because it's so fucking Yeah, random. he does like the thumb. Full thumb, Yeah. Like the little, little... I was trying to do it when we were watching it. I can't do it. It's like the your middle fingers. Your fingers are interlaced. And then one oh. middle finger... Yeah! Yeah! 
yeah, I can do it. Um, anyway, your middle fingers stupid. are going up and down. And-, and they are smoking a pipe. So, yeah, you know, the five-year-olds are smoking a pipe, which is really cool. And they're dancing and singing, like, a super racist song. Yeah, this song and is yikes. Yeah, uh, the they're all dancing, and Wendy's dancing, and this fat... All right, I'm not trying to be mean. A larger <laughs> bitch. <laughs> a larger bitch. I'll be mean. Tells Wendy that uh, she has to go get firewood. Yeah, she says the women don't dance. The women get firewood. Yeah, so she went, she went to go get firewood. But then when she comes back, Tiger Lily and Peter Pan are, like, dancing all cute. And she gets really mad. And the lady's like, no, go get more firewood. And she's like, bitch, I'm getting no more firewood. She's like, I'm going back to the tree she, of the hideout. She's like, no, I've had enough of this stupid party. <laughs> Peter Pan's over there, like... Sucking face with some other girl. Yeah, sucking face with Tiger <laughs> Lily. So Wendy gets mad and she leaves. I mean, it's fair. Yeah. Tiger Lily's literally only alive because of Wendy. Peter Pan forgot her. Um, Peter Pan did the whole fight stuff, so I don't okay, know. Okay, but then left Tiger Lily to die. Okay, with- well, he was distracted. Right, okay, so she would have died. Anyway, anyway so-, <laughs> so then back on the Jolly Roger, Hook convinces Tinkerbell to tell him where Peter Pan hides out so that she- so that he can kidnap Wendy because Wendy's like a big problem. So right. he's trying to like basically get on Tinkerbell's good side. Yeah, he says that he also hates Wendy, but they're leaving. So, you know, he can do this one last thing to be really nice to Tink and Pan for all of their good times together and Tinkerbell believes him. Like, yeah. she's uh, she's that jealous that she's like, you know what, yeah, fuck that bitch. I believe Hook right now. Like, right, so then Tinkerbell is like, yeah, I'll tell you where Wendy is, but, like, you cannot hurt Peter Pan. And, of course, Hook is like, yeah, good, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yep, we'll do that. Yeah, because she then, specifies that he can't lay Hook or Hand on Peter. So he agrees to that, but not to hurting him overall. After Tinkerbell tells him where the hideout is, which is literally the only other landmark on the map of Neverland (laughs) besides the native encampment, the Mermaid Lagoon, the Jolly Roger... I think that's it. That's and then and Hangman Skull Rock, Street. I think. Yeah, yeah, Skull Rock. Like, you know all the there. four places we've been today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hangman Street, the only other place on this map. Okay, that's great. Fair. Yeah, so he puts Tink in the lantern, and she's like, WTF, <laughs> why are you a bad guy? <laughs> so Tinkerbell kind of has a blonde moment, but it's fine. It's fine. So... All the Lost Boys get back to the hideout, and Wendy's like, all right, y'all, it's bedtime. And they're like, no, we're big boys now we can do whatever the hell we want and wendy's like no like we have to go home in the morning and they're all sad and peter's like you're not fucking leaving tomorrow what are you talking about you're a mother now and none of the lost boys either know or remember what a mother is so then it's the most boring song in this whole entire Mm -hmm. movie that i genuinely forget about every single time i mean it's a short Um, one it's not like it's a like a full-fledged song no i know but i just i remember every single other song in this movie except this one i literally forget it exists every time until it happens and it's just her singing about what a mother is (laughs) yeah singing about mommies uh but hook and the other pirates are surrounding hangman's tree and they boys all decide that they want to go home to see their mommies because no not their mommies they want wendy's (laughs) that's true (laughs) and wendy just volunteers her mom to right she's like like, yeah my mom wants 25 kids let's go perfect so wendy and all the lost boys and michael and john um they all start to head out to go back to london to their mommies. <laughs> Mommy. Just the one. <laughs> right. Sure. Just and Mrs. Then, Darling. Yeah. And then they all get kidnapped. Mm-hmm. So Peter Pan is being a little baby and hiding in his room. So back on the Jolly Roger, uh, Captain Hook is basically like, hey, become a pirate and get a free tattoo or walk the plank to everybody. And Wendy tells them. No, fuck you. No. Peter is going to save yeah, us. Peter Pan's basically coming to save us. Yeah. But honestly, they give a good presentation. They did a little song and a dance. They offer a free tattoo. I mean, like, it I'm, seemed like... I'm sold. <laughs> I'm going to become a pirate. I don't know. You didn't know. even have to threaten me with the plank. You say free right. tattoo and I'm there. <laughs> and then Captain Hook is like, well, joke's on you because I left a bomb for Peter Pan. So Which, he's going to blow up. He puts, like, a time on it? Like, it's going to blow up at 6 p.m.? Yeah, like, he's what, just dramatic. What are we he's doing? He's a flair for, for drama. Right. But Tinkerbell gets really pissed off when she hears that and, like, busts the lantern mm-hmm. and goes to tell Peter. Correct. So she gets to Peter, and she's trying to yank the package away, but Hook labeled the package from Wendy, 
So he's all like gushing, like, no, Wendy left me. This Tinkerbell let me open my present. And then she's still trying to yank it away and yank it away. And then he's like, oh, it sounds like it's ticking like a book. A what? And then Tinkerbell <laughs> yanks it out of his hand kind of last minute and it blows up the, the whole out. tree. Yeah. And yeah. then Peter is looking for Tink in the rubble and he sees her light and he's like running towards her and he's like, you mean more than anything in the world to me. Even Which, though he like, just banished her like two days ago. Over a girl he met nine minutes ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, sure. It was pretty So funny. Wendy and the Lost Boy say that they're not going to join because they see the bomb explosion from the Jolly Roger. Sure. So they're like, no, like, fuck you, we're not going to do it. So Wendy walks the plank and then all... splash. Yeah. All the (laughs) freaking pirates lose their ever-loving minds because there's no splash and they're like, oh my god, we're cursed now. She's a witch. She's a witch. Like, what is happening? But of course, it was Peter. Peter saves her. Mm -hmm. Uh, So then Peter and Hook fight again. Lost Boys and Wendy are all fighting all the pirates Mm -hmm. and then Peter and Hook are fighting each other. Smee is loading up a robo with Mm -hmm. a treasure. Yeah, Smee says... Go ahead and take it. Smee says, I'm fucking out of here. He's very positive. TikTok is waiting in the water uh, Mm -hmm. for Hook to to fall in and feed him the rest of his body. Smee is still escaping. Yep. Peter and Hook are fighting. And then Peter's like, you know what? Let's make this even. Yeah. I'll fight you with one arm behind my back. And And I won't fly. Yeah, Hook says, don't fly. So Peter agrees, and everyone's like, no, you fucking idiot, don't do that. Peter eventually wraps Hook up in the pirate flag. He's the best. And best he's fighter gonna, number one. Honestly, he's going to kill Hook mm-hmm. unless Hook admits that he's a codfish. Yeah. So Hook, being the codfish that he is, starts crying. and I'm a codfish. Yeah, admits that he's a codfish, which, I mean, is, is quite accurate. Hook tries to double-cross him with that, but then falls into the water right into TikTok. Yeah, TikTok was so, ready, too. Oh, he was, he's been ready. Um, so then I love and, when... Wait, I love when TikTok is... Sitting up in the water with his and he's little like hands. Splashing in the water. He's so cute. TikTok is honestly like my favorite. I have a little TikTok. I didn't realize how fucking cute he was and until we precious. watched this again. I love him. Uh, so then uh, Hook starts swimming away real quick mm-hmm. and TikTok is chasing him. Because he's about to get yeeted. Yeah. So the crew all ended up in the tiny little rowboat with Smee and so they all chase after Hook and Croc. No, and Smee is their captain. He is Smee's captain, the captain of the now. rowboat. I Crop Top King, I would follow him over, yes. over Hook any day. Me too. Um, so then Peter Pan decides to wear all of Hook's clothing, which I think is a look for him. Such a look. It's huge on him, but it's super cute. And says they're going to fly the ship. And Wendy's like, where the fuck are we going now? And he's like, dumb bitch, I'm taking you home like you asked me to. What are you saying? Uh, so they're really excited to get to go home. And Tink douses the Jolly Roger in hella pixie dust. Like, she... She shimmies all over that bitch. Yeah, and she turns the whole thing gold. I feel like that's a lot of pixie dust. Yeah. And then... She had it. Yeah. I mean, good for her. She's got that cake, yeah. you know? So we're back at the Darling residence. The Darlings come home and Wendy's sitting by the open window. She's asleep. Wendy's like, look in the sky, there's the ship, the Jolly Roger. And then mom and dad look out the window and they see it too. They're like, I feel like I've seen that before. Cue the beginning of the movie when they said, this is a story that's been told before. That's what I'm saying. So does Peter Pan just kidnap everyone? I'm just confused. Like, does he kidnap every child in London, like, every night? Or, like, what? I don't even think it's necessary that he kidnaps them. I think he... And then they kind of decide if they want to go home or not? Yeah. (sighs) Yes, and then they kind of forget as they grow up because it's so fanciful. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. wouldn't think that all the happening was actually a real thing that happened to you. Like, you would think it was just a dream as a child. Well, I guess so. But, yeah, and then that's the end. The end. Super cute. In London. Okay. I love Tinkerbell and I love TikTok Croc, but, like, Wendy's extra annoying and... I love Captain Hook. Want me to go first? Yes, because I'm struggling. I'm giving... I know it's going to be a major shock to everyone. I don't know about you guys. Oh, my God. But... Are you giving it 10? <laughs> yeah, man. I okay, love Peter Pan. Sis. Me too. I really do love it. Um, I'm putting it at number five. So I'm putting it under Hunchback, but above the Muppets, which I think is a fair, yeah. a fair spot. Why do you like it so much? I don't know. I think it's just because, like, it's such a classic. Mm. I feel like... 
all the characters are like well-rounded like I feel like they all very interesting like no one's like boring or weird everyone even like the smaller characters have like their personalities yeah. and like things about them I don't know I feel like and it I think another thing is it has so much representation in the parks that like I love it because I also love the park so much mm -hmm. you know what I mean so and any honestly anything like British I'm obsessed with so like, there's yeah. that too <laughs> I'm struggling so hard uh, yeah I had to look at my list for a hot minute to really decide I'm definitely giving it an eight it's definitely in my eights column I'm, I'm stuck at the jungle book right now like I love the jungle book a lot but I think I like Peter Pan more okay so now I'm at Pirates of the Caribbean Curse of the Black Pearl which I do love a lot I feel like you watch that more than you watch Peter Pan. I'm going to have, yeah, it's going to have to go to my number 10. So I'm putting Peter Pan at number 10 after Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, and above Jungle Book. But it's like, it's it's literally like tied with Jungle Book in my mind. But <laughs> for the purpose of this podcast, it's my number 10. So 8 out of 10. Love Peter Pan. I love Captain Hook. I love Smee. I love all the characters yeah That's except what I'm saying, wendy yeah. like wendy could they could have actually drowned her that would have been fine oh, i don't but, mind her i'm really excited for you to guess my movie oh my gosh okay let me put my let me throw my phone right okay. it's also british also british um, mary poppins no it's Fuck. it's fairly old okay. um this movie makes me sob old british sobbing um it's one of both of our favorite like characters but there's multiple books and movies. Um, there's multiple main characters, but like one obviously like main character. Brit. I have one last hint that is going to give it away. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a moment with those. I'm gonna Wait, okay. Like I'm gonna let you British, mm -hmm. lots of characters, mm -hmm. multiple movies, mm -hmm. and books. What? And, and you're gonna say it? And I'm gonna feel so stupid. And there's hella representation in the parks. Like hella represent. Two of the parks have hella representation. I don't know. It was on the wall in one of our nurseries. Oh, up. Winnie the Pooh. But which movie? But I mean, that's not, I guess it is British. It, but no, like, it is British. Yeah, but the characters don't all like have British accents. No, I didn't say that. Well, they that's did. what I'm saying. That's what I was thinking hardcore. I was like, who's fucking British? <laughs> <laughs> um, the one that makes me cry. <laughs> I mean, they're all really sad. I haven't seen Christopher Robin, the, the one that like just came out. I haven't seen it either. I haven't seen that one. Mm -mm. It's I don't not know. that. It's one of the cartoon ones. Is it fucking the one where Tigger loses his whole stupid ass? No, it's not the Tigger oh, movie. Dang. It's one of the Winnie the Pooh movies. I don't know. The have Search one? for Christopher Robin. I don't think I've seen that. The one where they go to Skull Rock? Oh, yeah, and it's, like, scary. I haven't seen it in, like, Oh, my God, it makes years. me literally... I cried as a 10-year-old watching it. What's it, it called? So. The Search for... It's Winnie the Pooh, The Search for Christopher Robin. Please Follow, go. Oh, go. It's oh, all you. Okay. Put your... Get your customer service voice on, Kat. Are you ready? <laughs> Tell them what to do. I don't know if I can do it just on command. Um, so... We have our Patreon set up, so please go to patreon.com slash tragical. It is $5 a month. You get some really cool stuff. We're going to have videos. We're going to have, like, extra episodes. We're going to have merch. We're going to have discount codes. We're going to have a whole bunch of cool stuff. Oh, my gosh. We're so close to 100 ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts, so please, 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 like, share us with a friend or, I don't know, just tell somebody about us take your friend's phone and subscribe to tragical and give it five stars because we're I, so close i like that idea yeah. so subscribe like, like check it out from oh computer. yeah you can find our you can find the link to patreon on our website it's and easy. everything will be linked in the show notes cc press, press everything in the show notes click all the buttons click all the links yeah <laughs> just click them all all of them <laughs> goodbye <laughs> <laughs> bye <laughs> Come on, Santa! <laughs> These opinions are our own and are in no way associated with the film or the film's production company. The cover art for Tragical Podcast was created by Johnny the Alchemist on Instagram. Give him a like and a follow to see more of his insanely good artwork and to contact him for any of your artwork needs. The Tragical Podcast intro music was produced by Ja Reezy. Contact information can be found on his Instagram at Ja Reezy. J-A-H-R-E-E-Z-Y. 